You must know that the Guardian Tower in the Temple City was built by the Haradrim for one purpose, to hold Mephisto. Once the Council is dead, you may enter the Tower. This is the story of the Blackened Temple and the quest's original appearance in Diablo 2. After first stepping foot in Travincal, then heading back to the Karast docks, Ormus will approach us with grim tidings. You have done well, my friend. Your courage and valor are an inspiration to us all. But now the time has come to face those responsible for the evil that has stifled our land. You must destroy the High Council of Zakarum. Long ago, these elders were charged with the stewardship of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, who was imprisoned within the Guardian Tower. Through the generations, these pious men slowly fell more and more under the sway of Mephisto's malevolent power, and the Council became an evil mockery of its former glory. It is Mephisto's hatred that has corrupted Zacharum and turned its devout followers into paranoid fanatics. That is why you must travel to the temple city of Travincal and slay the Council. Once they are gone, Mephisto's hold over this land and its people will be broken. What an awful and dread-inducing thought, that Mephisto's hate is so undeniable it has pervaded the most devout followers of light and corrupted their ranks into shadows of their former glory. After all, what greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? Although tasked with slaying Mephisto's Council of Unholy Stewards and bolstered by previously sourcing the Black Book of Skatsimi, most of the dialogue for this quest has alternative lines if we had not previously gathered the Tome of Lamb Essen. However, as we have retrieved it, we will only react to the true dialogue after we have found the Tome and completed the quest, to which the Herodric scholar Deckard Cain says, Ormus tells me that the Council is comprised of tremendously powerful priests. It will be difficult to best them. I would expect nothing less from Mephisto's shepherds. Haradli, the armorer, then reminds, Remember, you can always find sanctuary here with us. Sanctuary safety is tenuous at best. Natalia, the assassin still by her fire, bodes as well, saying, You are incredibly brave to venture into the lion's den. I wish you luck. Mashif, the shipmaster, then directs. There is only one way to the Temple City. You will have to cross many rivers and streams, but you'll find it. A great tower stands at its center. We think we had spied the Guardian Tower previously from the base of the bazaar in Kurast, like a reminder of the sightless eye ever watching our trespassing on their holy ground. Ashira, the mercenary, then warns. The children of Zakarum who guard the tower square can be killed but their numbers are vast. You must destroy their council. We have met their children barking in an unintelligible demonic tongue, and we think it's best they're put down for a long nap. Alcor, the alchemist inside his hut and book in hand, warns. The Black Book contains some vague prophecies regarding this undertaking. I'm not so sure it will turn out well for you. Perhaps the prophecy has been misread, or at least we hope our cremated bodies don't end up in one of Alcor's elixirs. Porceling back to Karast, as we fight through the bazaar, we find a slight incline of steps that host packs of faithful and twisted Zakarum zealots, aided by the Candor mystics, shooting streams of lightning and calling unholy powers to their aid. After we fell the mystic, we pause to take in the archway, a stone monument that cleaves a path through the swampy waters. It has a tall archway girded in skulls and thorns, resembling nothing of the former holy cause it once represented. On the causeway, our path is blocked by three guards. We fell the guards and cross over into Travancar, in which we see a fouled well with not even the wildlife surviving the demonic purge. The zealots of Zakarum, now darkly dressed, showing their true nature as a deceased man, whether prisoner or deemed heretic, is bound loosely to a tree, showing fresh wounds from his encounter with the neophytes therein. 
After contending with the more powerful Herophant priests and their brethren, in the middle of the courtyard lies a raised sacrificial altar. Drenched in blood, the air thick with its copper smell, where its victims' heads no doubt lay, and long, hollow pits to discard the flesh thereafter, with no bottom in sight. After much searching, we find a welcome waypoint and head north where a night lord waits, his own quarry tied to a stump, as is the fashion in Travancore in these dark times. After felling the night lord, our quest updates and gives us but one directive kill the High Council. Crossing the courtyard, a flaming hydra bursts to life beneath our feet as we just step clear the flames licking our heels. Red lightning spews from a creature a few steps above and as we clear the hydra, more spawn from every direction. And we realize this is no creature, but the mutated, half-demonic visage of an ex-council member. Talk, Ice Fist. As he raises his deformed demonic claw, more council members spew forth with their own hydra and watch from the windows as we cook hopelessly in our steel plate. Fireballs and red lightning start to cloud our vision, and we smell a sickly sweet aroma, which is, unfortunately, our own flesh beginning to burn and char. As we race backwards to cool off in the ponds adjacent, water hydra burst forth as if this is not the first time a victim has fallen into their same web. We move to face Torque, but realize the bulk of his mutated limbs weigh him down considerably and may be our salvation. Backing up as Tork is cocksure and stalking us for his victory, and so only enlists one of the council members for aid, no doubt a gladiatorial show for his brethren. We finally cleave Tork in twain, and he erupts in a wave of cold that pulses through our abdomen and nearly buckles our knees. But before falling, we find the strength to end his brother in arms, and picking up a flail that appears to be Kalim's, knowing the council will soon be bolstered by the powers of hate. After seeing their fellow councilmen slain, we dive through the town portal and back to the docks for any information on how to best protect ourselves in the battle to come. In which Deku Kane reminds, San Kekur may be using a compelling orb to control the minds of the children of Zakarum. Sankukur, the fabled vessel for Mephisto, shall pay for his transgressions. Haratli then warns, The followers of Zakaru demand complete allegiance to their creed. They have slaughtered many of their own for minor grievances. They will not hesitate to kill you. We, unfortunately, have seen their handiwork firsthand. Natalia then nods, I respect your need to do this. Honor demands that you see this through. Yet your chances are so slim. Mashif further guides. Within the temple city is a courtyard. The council resides there. Ormus then promises. If you die on this quest, I will commemorate your sacrifice in an epic poem. You will not need a potion to achieve immortality. Ormus's words will do that. We are afraid even the most epic of poems Sanctuary has ever been witness to may fall short with Ormus waxing lyrical. We then see Ashira. The Iron Wolves and I are at the ready to aid you. And finally, Alcor imparts. Kill as many as you can. I have a morbid love of excess. And kill as many of the corrupt Zakaru we shall. It seems the High Council have grimly decided to face us out in the open. Two councilmen step out to greet us. The first falls, yet the second, super unique Gelab flame finger refuses to go down so easily. Blinded by the cramped doorway, another council member rushes forth to aid in the assault. All the while, we're peppered by the Hydra's fireballs, scorching our exposed back and kidneys. The council members shift gears as Ishmael Vilehand steps into the fray, moving his hydra beneath us once again, so we bear the full fury of hellfire once more. Yet this time, we do not turn heel. We sense they are demoralized, seeing their brothers fall, and the end is near. The final remaining council brother has his hydra abate, he too easily falls. With naught left but carnage of the battle underfoot, our quest log updates, urging us to seek Kane's help with Kalim's flail. And before we do, we head inside the temple, to which we see the all too familiar altar covered in blood, yet is barred by 
some kind of magical force. A skull with rubies for eyes laughs at us from above, no doubt a mocking calling card from Mephisto himself. In the corner, we also see the unholy red compelling orb, and although we attempt to destroy it, it's to no avail. Impossible. However, Mephisto's own protective council slain, we head back to town to share the news. Cain greets us by the portal, saying, Ridding Kurast of the Council of Zakarum was essential. Still, there is more you must do. The compelling orb, too, must be destroyed. Diablo and Bale must be close to finding their brother Mephisto by now. You've no time to waste. We know his words ring true, and now have confirmed the only way we can breach the durance of hate is through the compelling orb and Kalim's will, and we can only pray we reach Mephisto before his brothers. Haratli then says, The followers of Zakarum lacked all sense of moderation. The collapse of a tainted religion gives me hope. Yes, they were corrupted, yet our own order of paladins shot forth from them, and I cannot help but mourn their passing, as their downfall was no doubt the wicked work of Mephisto himself. Natalia then further congratulates us, saying, I can hardly believe you did it. Your power blankets you like a shining aura. We appreciate the sentiment. We aren't sure if it is actually power she sees blanketing us, or a light mist bouncing off our superheated breastplate. Mishif then celebrates. It seems the jungle is already dying back. You've broken the curse, my friend. May the light bless you. Seeing Mishif's joy brings us hope, yet we know this is far from over. Ashira then muses. The sun has set on the religion of light. That it has. Our core sincerely says. You've accomplished the impossible. By killing the council, the curse of Zakarum will be lifted, and our land will be free! Oh, thank you! And we then deliver the news to the original quest giver, Ormus, who thanks. Ormus is grateful to you, stranger. You have broken the long, dark reign of Zakarum, and delivered the first paralyzing blow against the three. Yet still the true test lies ahead. For he whom the council guarded still lives within the blackened tower. It's in the distance we spy the blackened guardian tower, like a cruel dark finger pointing incredulously towards the heavens. And we know we have but one more duty, to find and banish the baleful presence of Mephisto and his brothers from this once pristine land forever or die trying. That's it for the video. Please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my upcoming lore videos out most weekdays at 7 p.m. PST. And if you want to further the conversation, my social accounts are linked. I'd love to chat. And we have a brand new Discord to celebrate lore. And we'll be running a Diablo 4 guild in which all are welcome. Thanks for watching. And until next time, traveler.